Dr. Gang Green Presents is made possible in part by Rick's Comic City. Welcome in to Shackle Island. Come in out of the weather and have a seat here. Sorry about all the rain, but you know, it always rains here on Shackle Island, so that's kind of to be expected. Of course, my weather machine may have something to do about that, but you know, the vultures like the rain, and I'm an animal lover, so what's a mad scientist to do? <laughs> anyway, you're just in time for another fright film, so sit back and relax. You're going to enjoy this. We'll see you back at the break. Professor Lyman. Good evening, Frank. What'll it be? The customary poison. Yes, sir. And what do you hear from the Martians, Professor? <laughs> no, some guys see pink elephants or little lizards. But the Professor here, he's different. He's got Martians. <laughs> well, someday, Franklin, when it's too late, People will appreciate my warnings. Remember, they laughed at Galileo. Yeah. Yeah, well, I, I've got work to do, Mr. Lyman, so excuse me, will you? And, uh, don't bother the customers, eh? Let me know if he bothers you, mister. Don't look now. Look at what? You see him? Sure, I saw him. He is one of them. He's been following me all day. Now the trick is to jump the gun on them with absolute convincing proof. Did you see how nonchalantly he walked by just then carrying his drink? He'd have fooled anybody, don't you agree? Oh, definitely. I knew that you were sensitive the first minute I saw you. You're a press photographer, aren't you? How'd you know that? I've been following you all morning. You what? Yes. Uh... Same again, gents? Uh, I sir. I first noticed you on the subway. I saw how you were watching everybody, particularly their foreheads, like a cat. Well, speaking of cats, by the way, did you know that they can see them too? Only they pretend that they can't. Of course, I have a theory that before they came to Earth, the cats ruled. Who are they? Well, the Martians, of course. Martians? <laughs> like an Orson Welles? Yes, I suspected from the first moment I saw you that you were aware of them too. Look, I'm a photographer. Faces are my business. I watch everybody. Hmm. Well, I, I could be wrong, of course. I've tried to persuade so many people, and all they do is laugh at me. But Professor Spitzer, that is the astrophysics man. Now, he had an article in last week's time in which he said that assuming that there was life on Mars and assuming that they were way ahead of us and could come to Earth, nobody, nobody would believe the few people who did see them Unless, of course, there was absolute, definite proof. All around, as you say. All around. Him? Shh. They rule the world. They have conquered us, and they're so clever that we don't even know it. Wait. They follow us. They even marry us. Now, you take bathtubs, for instance. Okay, take bathtubs. Nobody in their right mind would say that bathtubs are comfortable for us humans. But for Martians, they're fine. Now look, whenever I hear the water running into my bathtub, and I know that there's a Martian splashing around in there, 
I usually pretend that I don't hear a thing. Oh, that's a smart move. Well, they hypnotize us, you know. Oh, you don't say. It accounts for so many, many things. Now, why, why does a criminal confess? Hmm? Isn't that the most illogical thing in the world? And, and, and yet he does it. Nothing makes any sense. So you're serious about all this, aren't you? And uh, why is my wife so illogical about money? Martians? Hmm. Precisely. You know, just last week, I uh, realized suddenly that my bed was too short for me and I wanted to buy uh, a long one. Did I? Oh, no. Why? Because the Martian, who generally sleeps there, he persuaded me that I shouldn't spend the money. I shall go through the rest of my life now with my feet sticking out over the edge of that bed. Does that make any sense, does it? Hey, look, you aren't kidding, are you? And take wars. Wars don't make sense from any human viewpoint. Nobody wants them. We go right on having them. Why? Search me, Doc. Why? From the Martian viewpoint, they're, they're valuable. You see, they give us a spurt in technocracy. And the Martians use our developments for their own purposes. You figured this out all by yourself, huh, Doc? All by myself. Okay, Doc, I get the picture. Now look, why don't you take your drink and get down there and sit all by yourself? And do you know how I tell? No. It's the third eye. Would you say that again? It's the third eye. There's a third eye right here, in the middle of the forehead. It's invisible most of the time. Hey, wait a minute. What? If it's invisible, Doc, how can you see it? This, uh, it's a special prescription for infrared light. My physician gave it to me about a year ago for a most unusual eye condition. That was when I saw them for the first time. And I concluded that the third eye is only visible in infrared light. Now, I want to give this secret to the world, but nobody will believe me unless you... Yeah, sure, Doc. Go on. Well, I must warn the world. And the question is, how far will I get? <laughs> That's a good question. You see, not even the Martians believe me. Oh, if they did, I'd be a dead duck by now, wouldn't I? Now, I had hoped that... No. I suppose that your Martian has hypnotized you just like all the rest. You won't believe me. Did you say my Martian? Please. Now, I may be just a tiny bit drunk, but my logic is absolutely unimpaired. Two and two equals two and two. Either you know about the Martians or you don't. If you do know, why do you give me this my Martian routine? Hmm? I, 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 my Martian knows you have a Martian. I know you have a Martian. The only question is, do you know it? Will you think hard? Will you? No, I don't have one. Why? You're very nervous, aren't you? Yes. You're very nervous, aren't you? Of course you have a Martian. Everybody has one following him around, watching him, giving him... What would I be doing with a Martian? You're out of your... Was it... Uh... Look, I must go. Not just yet, Doc. What? Is anybody watching us? Listen, when you started talking, I figured you were loony as a bedbug. Maybe you are. But this third eye business interests me. Sit down. No, I'm Come not. Come on, sit down. I have a studio on the ground floor of my house where I do some private work. You know, portraits and stuff to pick up an extra buck now and again. I really don't need any portraits. About a month ago, I started fooling around with some infrared film. It's something new, you know, for taking pictures in almost complete darkness. Well, I shot a picture of my studio. When I developed it, there was someone looking in my window. Well, I... I blew it up to see who it was and... Here it is. I figured it was some Halloween gag until you started talking a little while ago. Now, now that we've both seen it, we might be able to convince people. It, 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 it was, it'll be dangerous, though. You see, as long as it was just a question of one drunk old man babbling in a bar, they didn't need to worry about that. But now the two don't. You take this photograph for safekeeping. To the negative. Well, 
Come to my studio about 8 o'clock tonight. We'll figure out how to proceed. Can you be there? My wife. Well, tell her you have to visit a sick friend. Tell her anything, but be there. Here's the address. Well, I... You better go out the back way. So long, Professor. Ah, <laughs> uh, he's quite a character, eh? Uh. Up. You know, I've seen him come here with all kinds of things. But he's the first one I've seen with Martians. <laughs> Hope you guys aren't finding tonight's fright film quite too frightening because it's nowhere near as scary as what's coming up next. Close your eyes now. Here come the commercials. What is the name of the guy who sees aliens in tonight's episode? Answer after these messages. Summertime's here and everyone likes to get outside and enjoy the outdoors. But to keep the environment a safe, clean place, we need everyone's help. Cigarette litter is a fire hazard, environmental danger, and litter nuisance. Filters on a cigarette take years to decompose and can threaten aquatic life and water supplies. Take a second to properly dispose of cigarette butts in an ashtray or approved receptacle. Remember, considerate smokers don't litter. Don't be a bonehead. Dispose of those butts properly. And remember to go green with Dr. Game Green. So do you recognize the guy who sees aliens in tonight's episode? Why, well, that's none other than Burgess Meredith. Welcome back to tonight's scary movie here on Dr. Gang Green Presents. You know, the lawyers visited me the other day. They were worried that my show was too scary. Seems the network executives were worried that one of you viewers would die of fright, so they wanted me to take out extra insurance. Well, I convinced them that my show wasn't really that scary. I mean, after all, Rosie O'Donnell's been allowed to have a show back on TV. Now that's scary. Hello, Sorrell speaking. Hello, Mr. Sorrell. This is Professor Lyman. Well? Uh, I had a difficult time. My wife is a most suspicious woman, but I managed to sneak out. Good. Where are you? I'm in a drugstore near your corner. Now, you listen to me. Do you remember the one who was snooping around the bar? Yeah. He's been following me ever since, ever since I left the house. I think I managed to give him the slip, but I'll, I'll stay here a few minutes to make certain. You have the negative? Yes. Oh, good. But we must be careful. We must be careful. When I get there, will you let me in quickly? Right. Good. I'll be over in a minute. Goodbye. Goodbye. I'll be waiting. Thank heaven you got here. I would. You. Good evening, Mr. Sorrell. You have an excellent memory for faces. So do I. What do you want? Let's not be naive, Mr. Sorrell. I was extremely interested in your infrared photography this morning. I don't know what you're talking about. After listening to our friend Lyman babble about three-eyed Martians for the past few weeks, it came as quite a surprise to me when you actually produced a photograph corroborating what he said. Naturally, it was most important that I verify the photograph and the technique. You're crazy. You're mistaken, Mr. Sorrell. It's our friend Lyman who's crazy. 
At least I hope the proof he is. You will get the photograph for me, please. And the negative. Who are you? Our friend Lyman has been acting most peculiarly lately. His wife has become concerned. She's thinking of having him legally committed to an institution. What's all this got to do with you? I, too, am most anxious that Lyman be committed. I've been following him for some weeks. So, naturally, Mr. Sorrell, following him, I observed him. So, you see, that's my job. I want to make sure that Lyman is committed as insane. So that Mrs. Lyman is free to pursue the kind of life that she chooses to lead. So naturally, when you come along and verify all the things that have been that he's been saying, I am most concerned. You're lying. You're one of them. Get the photograph, Mr. Sorrell. And if I refuse? You will not refuse. in the dark room. And Mr. Sorrell, no tricks, please. My client is very determined. Operator. Hello, operator. Operator, get me the police. See, you thought of everything, including the telephone wires. Here's the negative. It was taken with infrared film using a combination of filters known only to me. I used this camera using ordinary technique, like this. Here. Here. Martians are flesh and blood and they can be killed. How? Well, I managed to sneak in and surprise him. I borrowed your little paper now. But this, this is murder. What do you think he'd have done to you if I hadn't killed him? But I'll get the police. No, don't be a fool. Do you think that the police are going to believe a fantastic story about a three-eyed Martian? We aren't ready for them yet. No, we've got to convince the world before we tell them. But the body. Someone may come in here at any moment. You pretend that you're taking... You pretend that you're taking his portrait. You see, I'll be in the base. I can't! Well, you must. Hold on. One moment! Wait a minute. Maybe he wasn't a Martian. Why, Maybe of he's... course he's a Martian. I can see his third eye quite plainly. It's staring wide open. Don't, don't you feel it looking well, at you? Stop talking like that. Hide. You be calm. Hey, don't worry. We'll be back with more of Dr. Gangrene Presents right after these messages. Stay tuned and... Try not to get too scared because this is pretty rough stuff. What role is actor Burgess Meredith best known for? Answer after these messages. Hey, what do you think you're doing? Did you know that recycling just one soda can power a television for up to three hours? Not to mention that aluminum can be recycled an unlimited number of times. Always be sure to place your cans in a recyclable container. Remember, you can make a difference. What role is actor Burgess Meredith best known for? Answer, the penguin on Batman. Whack, whack, whack. Welcome back, Fright fans. I know you're all going batty to see how tonight's movie turns out, so we'll get you back to it. And speaking of bats, I left the window open, and we've got some here in the lab. I'll see you back in a few. Please.
Oh, uh, Mr. Sorrell? Uh, hello, officer. I'm, uh, I'm terribly sorry to have kept you waiting, but uh, I was doing a portrait. Oh, well, I'm sorry to bother you, sir, but the telephone operator phoned Precinct. She said she got a call from your number. Sound like you needed help. No, no, everything's perfectly all right, really. Uh, thanks very much for coming anyway. Well, I just wanted to make sure. Mind if I look around? Well, uh, I'm pretty interested in photography. I noticed your rig in here. Yeah, that's a beauty, all right. Uh-huh. Boy, I wish I could afford one like that, but I guess not on my salary, huh? Well, Mr. Sorrell, I see you're busy, so I'll just take off. I'm sorry to have bothered you, sir, but you know all these things are. Oh, uh, watch the birdie. <laughs> Good night, Mr. Sorrell. Good night, officer. If, if only I could be certain. If only there was some positive way. Simon. What? Are you ready yet? In a minute. You bring him down. Hey, welcome back, Fright fans. Hope you enjoyed that movie. I got all those bats out of here, but a couple of the little buggers took a bite out of me. Oh, I feel a little thirsty all of a sudden. Hmm. A little tomato juice, maybe. We'll see you guys here next week for another scary movie. Hmm. Oh, positive, man. <laughs>